All right, still having problems with my four-wheeler overheating, uh, so we're gonna get into that today. But before we do, we need to clean this thing because nobody likes working on a dirty machine. All right, now that she's all good and clean, and by the way, I don't have a name for this thing, so if you have some suggestions, uh, drop them below in the comments. I've been struggling over this for about seven years now, what the name, it's a big old beast. Um, but I think the next things we're going to do is um, we're going to start taking apart the front end. We're going to take the radiator, take a look at that. Uh, we're going to take a look at some regular maintenance stuff and really try and understand what's going on with the machine and why it's overheating. Um, we were going, we were up at Spider a couple, couple weeks ago and in order to go to a restaurant you really need to go about 10 miles uh, east into town and the machine just really could not handle it. I was overheating. Um, I got I got about four or five miles in and then she was done. I had to pull over and sit for an hour and do the same thing two more times or one one or two more times. But So that's what we're going to get into today. Um, I'm going to get this thing in the garage. We'll start tearing it down and kind of talk you through all the steps as we get into them. All right, so we pulled the plug. Um, yeah, this one looks a little... Looks like I'm burning a little bit of oil or something here. I've got some carbon deposits on it, but overall it's not bleached white, um, which is a good sign. So we know the head gasket, or at least it's not consuming any water. All right, we're going to be testing. We're going to be pressurizing the system. Uh, I got this, I don't know, cheapo online. If you don't have one, any auto parts store will have them. So let me get this hooked up and then we'll pressure test the unit and see if we got any leaks anywhere. Okay, so uh, I decided I was gonna use one of one of these adapters. You got a bunch of these different sizes. Basically, I just picked the one that fits in here and it's gonna plug the hole. And then uh, reverse thread. So we got this thing all snug down. And we're going to attach the pump. Alright, now we're going to put in just over 15 pounds and we're going to let it sit. Now at this point, this should not drop. If it does, you're going to want to start chasing all the different locations to hear the hissing sound. Um, I'm pretty sure that mine's good, but we'll let it sit here for a few minutes and see if it drops at all and inspect for leaks. Alright, uh, looks like the uh, thermostat gasket's leaking. Um, I was getting a little bit of a hint of sweetness when I was driving it and I thought it was just a Honda thing but apparently got a little bit of a leak. So I'm going to take this apart and take a look at the seal um, other than that, the gauge doesn't appear to be dropping much. I mean, it's holding true. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the water pump is working and the thermostat's opening. So, well, we're going to run the machine uh, until the coolant temp gets to about 175-ish. And at that point, if the thermostat's opening, we should start seeing it circulating. Um, so that tells us two things. One, the thermostat's opening, and two, we get a functioning water pump. So that's two critical things that we need so that the machine doesn't overheat.
The other thing to notice too is there's no bubbles coming in. If you were seeing bubbles right now, you'd most likely have a head gasket issue. And it looks like the fan kicked in. It's moving quite a bit of air. All right, so I think I can say that um, my machine's thermostat's working properly. We saw the fan work, and we saw the coolant move due to the water pump circulating coolant. So aside from my only issue, which was the uh, thermostat gasket, which I'll order and, and get, uh, get taken care of here uh, pretty soon,